Good morning, good night, good meeting everyone, and today we are bringing you Montana, the tier 10 tech line ship for the American battleships. Again, Montana, one of the oldest battleships in the game. Right off the bat, without the merit flag, 50% to credits, 105 to ship XP, 115 to commander, and 150 with a clan. Armor wise, 20, 27, 32 millimeter bow. Belt armor of 409, side plating of 38, and then a deck armor of 38. And then you have the 32 millimeter, well, stern. Again, you can bounce shells on this belt arm, on this armor belt here. You can bounce shells if you angle angle properly. Now we'll show you her citadel. It is a waterline citadel, still able to be hit. You can hit. It can still be hit by this thing if the enemy knows where to hit you. You are, as you can see, still slightly at the waterline, but just barely. So you can still get hit in this thing. So you have to take that into account. Survivability so wise. 92, 90, 92, 90, no, sorry, 96,300, 37% torpedo reduction, uh, try not to take torps, you will be able to take some torps, but continuous torp damage will hurt, her main selling point are her 12 406 millimeter guns, now, the way I have it set up is a 30 second reload standard, Minimum switch time of 18 seconds. Since this is just a normal standard build captain, no special perks. Uh, it's going to be a standard 18 second switch time. Standard 33 second 180. 264 max dispersion. 24 kilometer range rounded up. AP and HE damage is 5,700 for HE. 13,500 for... Well, the AP, uh, then we go to the fire chance is 38, 30, 30, I wish it was 38%, but 36%, 68 millimeter armor pin on the HE though. That's pretty good. You can, if you absolutely have to use the HE, you can use the HE if you're in a desperate situation. The velocity is actually better than the AP shells at 820. Now... Velocity of the AP is at 762. So that is the classic American floaty shells. But these have are very hard hitting shells. The American lines, the cruisers, and the battleships have known for their heavy armor piercing salvos. And Montana does not disappoint. Secondaries, nothing special. I mean, you could spec into secondaries. Like in Ohio, but it's just honestly a waste. So I would honestly recommend just to keep the secondaries at stock. At four seconds, 7.3 range, 1800 max damage, 9% of fire, 21 armor pin, and an 808 velocity. Nothing special. Airstrikes or subs, you get an 11 kilometer range, which is actually very decent. Two bombs on the payload and 5000 max damage. Doable. And the way I have my Montana up, you are able to take subs on a little bit more sufficiently. Sufficiently. Just a little bit. Depending on the submarine skill. AA-wise, um, back in the day with RTS CVs, Americans used to have good AA. I mean, 20 single mount, single mount or lichens. 20 dual mount or lichens. 20 quad mount bofers. And then the 10 5-inch guns. Again, all that AA is, you know, in the short range and medium at 508 for the medium and then 371 for the short range. Uh, long range, not the best, 175. Six kilometer range, average. Uh, against tier 8 CVs, you're going to be great. Tier 10 CVs, Malta, Nakamov, FDR. Possibly even Immelman, Hakuyu, any of those CVs, um, good luck. Pray it's a bad CV player. Because if they really want to strike you, oh, they'll strike you, without a doubt. 
Maneuverability, 30 knots without brisk. 950 turning circle, 12 second rudder shift. Not the best, so think about planning ahead. Concealment, how I have it built up is 15.6. Not optimal, but you can still work with it. Now, into the build. I do auxiliary armaments one because, again, you don't have the best AA, so you want to keep the AA alive. That's how I like to run it. Then damage control mod one, main battery mod two, steering gears, and I run a legendary Montana, so I sacrifice the reinforced emergency response for concealment. So that's a pretty big blow, but what you're getting in terms of this is minus 10% to fire, minus 10% to flood recovery time, a 30 second rudder shift. So you're doing plus the steering gears, you're going down 40% on your rudder shift. So you get a little bit more maneuverable and if your steering gears not get knocked out, you get a negative or minus 70% repair time to it. So that's a significant boost to the ship's survivability and makes it a really strong ship for competitive and just everything. Now, this is absolutely no doubt. There is no reason to run this main battery three. It's if you're not running artillery pattern room one, the minus twelve to, minus eleven to dispersion, uh, you're running Montana wrong. I'm sorry, but this is always a must. If you're gonna run Montana, you've gotta take this skill. If you can only afford this, afford a few skills for you know Montana, artillery pattern room run. Artillery plotting room two. Um, concealment expert. And then I would honestly go damage control abilities. That's what I would do if I was stretched on cash. Since you can see I have a lot of credits, I'm not really worried. Now, fighter or spotter, always spotter. Because you can shoot over islands. Absolutely. Now, into the build. Standard. Um... Gun feeder, grease the gears, adrenaline rush, emergency repair expert, concealment expert, fire prevention. And then after that, I'll have three points left over. So you could, if you want to go even further with the survivability, you can go basic survivability. If you want to mix it up and be a little bit more tankier, I would go brisk and emergency repair specialist. That's what I would do. So there is some flexibility in those last three points. But it depends on what you want to do. Ideally, you want to go with basic survivability. That's just little legitimately what you want to do. Now, into the camo. Uh, if you want to spend 8,000 doubloons on a cosmetic camo, uh, Crocosaur, uh, it's a very beautiful camo. It has a lot of animations. It just looks like a very beautiful camo. But, if you, but I don't recommend it because... It's average. If you have, if you don't have the chance to pick up the Optimus Prime camo for Transformers, I don't know if that collaboration is coming around again. It's unfortunate, but I really do like this camo. But for the standard camo, if you really want to, that's what it looks like. If you get the alternative set ability, that's what it looks like. Again, there's really no harm in running a, a naked chip anymore. It doesn't do anything. All you really need is to take the economic package and you'll have a profitable ship with some premium time and you'll be okay but let's show you how montana does it and how tanky she really can be hello and welcome back my loyal subscribers and we're on montana's tech line replay so we've did so we're in the new Eve symptomatic mode where we have Kerr first palmer salem petro and montana Again, it's literally a pure battleship and one DD and a sub and a CV. But a tier 8 CV versus a Montana, not very threatening. And since I have a Palmer, I'm thinking a Palmer is going to be stealing a lot of my damage. So I've got to just charge in. Since I'm legendary, I can tank 10 times better than both these Germans can. I have better armor and better damage control. At the expense of a little concealment. So, it's worth the trade.
And Montana is one of the oldest battle. Is like the is I believe it's the second or the it's among the two oldest battleships, being Monty and Yamato being the oldest in the game. And this ship is with the legendary mod. She's aged pretty well. Although the Schlieffen has rendered her slightly mute to a point. And that's what's sad. If they put bans on Schlieffens and like, no, you can't take a Schlieffen. I would take a Montana. Personally, I just don't consider Schlieffen, you know... A high skill boat. It's literally just you push conservatively. Your secondaries do most of the work, and since you have IFHE, you pin literally everything you face. And one v one, Schlieffen wins the fight against like any battleship if it's a one v one, because any ship can't, because no ship can get within those secondary ranges, because it will start to get whittled. A curve first is different. But a Schlieffen is just a whole ball game. But since the Pomeran isn't really pushing in, I can do whatever I want. Our Salem, though, is being a little odd. Because you can see he's going all the way up north. Whereas if he would go to that island at E9 and just hug his bow, put his bow right there, he'd be fine. Or technically, this would be E8. And he just put his bow right on that island, and he'd be fine. But, I don't know what he was doing. And Petro, well, Petro, Petro's a good ship. But it does good against cruisers. Against a pure battleship comp like this, uh, not that good. And I'm not worried about the Nebraska, since he's controlling his planes, or was... He's basically not, you know, a threat to me. And I have 12 406 millimeter guns, so nothing really scares me. Hawk shoots, I bounce the shells, I do take some cross shots, but it's okay. I bring all my guns onto bear on this hawk. Because he's already shot. Boom. Almost 74k right off the bat with one deletion. Hawk is so easy to delete that I don't know how some people... Because I've been playing, you know, Salem's and Des Moines and Montes in this mode. And I've seen a lot of battleships have trouble nuking these things off the map. It's not a hard ship to destroy. Now I'm literally pushing. There's no point. There's nothing that can stop me. And I'm taking like 15, 16k chunks off ships. And the Pomeran is just, well, defending the base, loading each. Our Petro does go down. But he really put himself in a bad position. I imagine when he went broadside to those two, Veneto and Vladivostok, he took a Citadel or two. And ever since I raised Petro's Citadel, it's not as strong as it used to be, by far. Right there, we do tw almost 20k. The salvo weight from these 406mm guns is insane. You don't, you can't catch a sleeve from doing this without getting a Citadel or two. And our GK is kind of doing the same thing I am, going around the islands and just pushing. He knows if he just pushes in and angles, he's fine. But literally, all the enemy team is literally most likely looking at me. I don't have, like, priority target on this ship, so I have no idea who's aiming at me. But I imagine I have at least three to four aiming at me. I'm not worried about the Veneto. See, I just aim a little bit high, and I still take 18k off of them at that kind of angle. Like, I'm not truly worried. 
And I'm not worried against fires or floods because I have that extra damage ability. Since I'm damage control legendary, I can repair that 10 times faster. So the only thing that I'm worried about is getting chunked and citadel. And as long as I stay angled enough, I bounce all the shells. T almost 24k off that. I got a fire burning on Veneto, so he's just gonna slowly burn. That other Veneto is showing me a perfect broadside, though. I pop a heal just because. I know I'm gonna need to go in it. Because I got four battleships in front of me. One off to my left, then three in front of me. I could have shot the Veneto in front of me, but I wanted to kill this one on my left. Not our best strike. We didn't get a perfect salvo. And I kind of have to go slightly broadside to all these ships. Since the Veneto shot, I'm, what, I'm just going to let my secondaries, but I was thinking on, yeah. I was going to let my secondaries slowly with him. I do take a pretty good chunk from him, though. He does get me back. Since my secondary's got another fire on him, he, he goes down. I'm not worried about it. But the Vlad is basically right there in front of me. And we do 50k to him. We do take another Citadel from the Richelieu. Again, you see, it was the chunks in the Citadels that were killing me. The fires don't do nothing. But once I'm able to angle back in, they can't do anything against me. And I got to heal in 30 seconds, which can heal back a chunk to my health. So I'm not, like, worried. Again, another 12k off of them. The planes don't even get near me. I just blow them out of the sky. Two fires on the Vlad. He's going down. And the sub is snuck into our base. So we're like, can the sub, can they get that sub down? Because it was like really kind of scary there. Because it would suck if they weren't aggressive enough and the sub just capped us out. That would be embarrassing. Very embarrassing. Fire the front guns. And do almost 30k with one citadel. And servo pins. Like, it is insane. And... My tank damage is up to almost two and a half million. I get kamikaze from an aircraft hitting my back. So I'm like, eh. I do take a pot shot at the Fobeda because there's real because I don't have nothing else to really shoot. That's showing me a decent angle. But you see, even though the planes do drop, they still go bye-bye because of the AA. Kerr first picks up the CV, so kudos to him. But you literally just see me just pushing in. I'm almost at 300k, and this is going to put me over 300k. 16k. And we cross two and a half million tank. Kerr first picks up the Richelieu. And we kill it with our guns. 325k in a Montana. 325k. 